In this video, we're going over how to use the new Fitbit Charge 5 for beginners. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. In the video today, I'm gonna to walk you through how to use the new Fitbit Charge 5. We're gonna walk you through from the beginning of setting it up, pairing it with your phone, how to use the app, how to turn on your notifications, and how to change your watch face. So make sure you stay tuned to the very end so you don't miss any of the important instructions on how to set up your device and how to use it. Let's jump right in. I'm gonna be setting it up on an Android phone. And on Android phones, um, you should see a pop-up. Once you connect your Fitbit to the original charger, you will see this pop-up show up on your phone. Here's the charger here. I'm just gonna take it and connect the pins here. Pins, pins, put that together. And this is the message you will see which says, hey, download the Fitbit app. So for whatever reason, if you don't have this pop-up showing up on your phone, whether you have an Android phone or an iPhone, then you will need to go to the store to download the app. So on an Android phone, it is the Play Store. And on an iPhone, it is the Apple App Store. So you need to go there and search Fitbit and then download the Fitbit app. Now, since I have the pop-up, all I need to do is just hit Setup. And it's gonna take me right to the Google Play uh, Play Store and to the app, and I can just simply hit Install to start downloading the app. Now, the install should be pretty quick. And once it's finished, um, we're going to open the app. And the first thing it's gonna ask us to do is to sign into our Fitbit account. And if you don't have a Fitbit account, you'll just need to create one, which is only a few steps. So make sure you have your email handy. If you already have a Fitbit account, make sure you have your Fitbit email and password so you can get into the app easily. All right, so the app is downloaded. It's taking us right to the main page of the Fitbit app. And we're gonna tap login because I do already have a Fitbit account. And I'm gonna enter my information now. Okay, so I entered my email address and password and I just signed into the Fitbit app. And once again, if you didn't already have a Fitbit account, you'll just simply set up a new account on that screen. And here it's asking, um, there's a Fitbit Charge 5 connected already to my account, so I will need to set up a new one. I'm gonna hit replace Fitbit Charge 5. Hit okay for permissions. You're gonna swipe up to accept the terms and conditions. And then um, it will ask you to enable your location permissions. And this is simply for tracking um, your runs and your steps and logging the data in the app. I'm gonna tap log the permissions. I'm gonna hit while using the app. And then I'm gonna tap here and move this to the top option, allow at all time. And hit done. Now that quickly, it was able to find the Fitbit and you'll see a four digit number pop on the screen. And I'm gonna enter it now. Now usually after it pairs with your phone, the first thing it will do is, is look for an update to see if there's a new software version that it should be working on. And it usually will start doing the latest update, which will take about 10 minutes. So just keep in mind, it might take a minute before you can start using it. We're gonna tap up here, pair and connect. Allow contacts, hit pair again. Press OK to link it and allow. And here we are, it's prompting for our software update. And this one is saying it could be up to 40 minutes. So again, just set your expectations properly. You can hit update later. Um, I would recommend that you just do it now and get it out of the way so you're working off of the latest software feature features. Uh, I'm gonna wait until later though, just cause I wanna finish the video and, and take us through the entire process. So I'm gonna hit update later. And don't worry, it will prompt you again 
for the update. Now it's showing you how to connect your uh, Fitbit band um, to the band that comes with it and also how far it should be on your wrist. We're going to hit next. This part is cool. It's going to walk you through just a basic setup of how to use it. So it's showing you you're going to double tap the screen to wake it up. You can also wake up the screen and let's slide this over a bit. You can also wake up the screen by simply just turning your wrist like this. So if it's on your wrist and you turn, it's going to show you the time. But if your wrist is already in a set position, just tap it twice and that will turn on the screen so you can see the time and your stats. All right, next. It's breaking down the uh, gesture to navigate. Now this is going to be super easy here. So on your Fitbit, two taps, you simply can swipe through to see all the options. There's only five or it should be maybe like, uh, yeah, I think there's five. Now swiping left or right is going to do the same thing. On previous Fitbits, when you swiped a different direction, it brought up a different menu, but on the Charge 5, they've kept things very simple. So if I swipe to the right, it's just going to take me in the reverse order of where I just was. And vice versa, if I start here and then I go left, it's going to show me the same options, just in the reverse order. So swiping left or swiping right for navigating doesn't really matter too much. Now, uh, if you start at the top and swipe down, this will bring up your payment options. If you have a credit card that's linked to your Fitbit, you can pay through there. You have your D&D &D mode, which is do not disturb mode. So at night you can turn this on and your wrist is not going to vibrate whenever someone sends you a text or a call. Um, it will basically limit the communication so your wrist is not vibrating all night. Also great for when you go into meetings if you don't want your Fitbit vibrating too loud. I'm going to turn this off for now. Let's keep going up here. We have a sleep mode, screen wake mode. This is also really important. I demonstrated a few minutes ago that if you turn your wrist, the screen is automatically going to wake up. But if I turn this off or switch it to manual, now if I try to rotate my wrist, it's not going to move with me. So on the manual, you can flick your wrist, but the screen is not going to turn on because it's on manual. You'll have to double tap the screen just to get it to wake up. So I tend to keep this on auto because auto is just makes more sense to me. And I want to be able to see my Fitbit as if I had a watch on my wrist. So I like to be able to flip and just take that look. You also have your water lock option, which is if you're going to be swimming, you'll want to turn this on so that your Fitbit doesn't go haywire with the exposure to the water. It is water resistant and it can handle it in the water, but it doesn't mean the water is going to affect the screen and cause it to go haywire. So make sure you enable that water lock feature if you are uh, swimming or going to be in a pool for a while. All right, so those are all the options at the top. There's actually, excuse me, one more. There's the settings and you'll find some other cool options there. So make sure you spend some time and go through that. Now, if I go back to my main screen and I swipe up, I'm gonna to get to a different menu with different options. So this is gonna show me all my main stats for the day. Steps, how many miles I walked, active minutes, calories burnt, all that. How many hours of activity did I have? My heart rate, sleep, SPO2, your, how many times you exercise this week. So it's a, it's a wealth of knowledge that you have um, just in this little section here. And a lot of these are tied to if you're using the Fitbit app to log all these features. So if you're logging food, if you're logging water, you'll be able to see your data from this screen here. If you're not using that feature, then this won't mean as much to you. Okay. so. That's, those are really the basics of how to navigate your Charge 5. Now, I do want to demonstrate one more thing that I think is important for you to see because it is a bit tricky. So if you want it to swipe over 
and you want to set an alarm, this is the process to do it. So tap on alarm. And um, it's a bit hard to see, but right above the big numbers, you'll see some small numbers that's showing you the time that it's trying to change for the alarm. So let's say I want my alarm to go off at 8 a.m. So I'm going to go to the 8. Then I'm going to tap on the number, and it will take me to the next sequence, which is the minutes. So I'm going to go to 0, tap on the zeros. That's going to lock that in. Then I'm going to put a.m. or p.m. I'm going to put a.m. and now my alarm is set. So that is how you navigate the menu so you can change or manipulate the time accordingly. You'll also find this very helpful if you are in the timer tab. It's very similar how you have to set a timer if you want to say hey a 20 minute timer you have to go to the number first, tap the number tap again, and then hit start, and that's how you would start the timer. So those are just some of the other built-in features that you'll find on the charge and how to use them. Now there's one more important tip I wanna show you about navigating the screen. Now I'm gonna go over to an app here. I'm gonna to go to notifications, and this is a text message that I just received, and basically I tapped on notifications so I can read the message, and now I want to go out of the message. Well, there is no back button. There's a back gesture. So to move back one step, I need to start on the left side and swipe into the screen like this. By doing that, it took me back to this screen. Let me show you one more time. Tap on notifications. And I want to go back one step. I'm going to just swipe in. And that's going to take me back one step. And then obviously I'm back to my main screen. Now I'm going to demonstrate this one more time in the settings app because it'll be a little bit easier to see it in action here. So let's say I went into settings and I went to quiet modes and now I want to go back one step. I'm going to start from the left side, swipe in. So here, sorry, I just want to make sure it's set up. I'm going to swipe in to go back one, swipe again and swipe again. And now I'm back to the home screen. So left side, swiping into the middle of the screen, that's how you go back one step, okay? So now that we've gone over navigating, I wanna go over notifications. Now, uh, in the next section of the video, I'm gonna go over how you enable notifications and how you decide what apps will be able to send you notifications. But quickly, I wanna show you a text message. This is what a message will look like. So this is one message here. So. I'm looking at it, um, I can read it, and then I can hit clear all if I want to clear all notifications. I really only have two notifications coming through right now. One is a text message, and right now I'm just seeing a preview of it, but if I tap on it, I can actually read the entire message here, and then I can hit open to look at it from my phone or I can just hit clear to clear the notification off of the phone. So in this case, I'm gonna show you if I hit open, it's gonna prompt on my phone and take me right to the application to then look at that message. And obviously now I have to put in my fingerprint and I have to actually launch the app there. So that's the cool thing when notifications come through is uh, obviously you'll be able to read it and then you can hit that button open to get right to the app and then look at more detail. This is another notification coming through from another app and I'm reading it, I read it, I'm good. Now I wanna hit clear all. And now I've cleared out the notifications from coming through my screen. So um, that's just a preview of what your notifications will look like. All right, let's jump back over to the app and see what are the last few things it's trying to show us. We're gonna hit next. So it's walking us through the swiping, which we already did, wear and tear, and we're done. So our, our initial setup is done. Next, it will ask if we wanna sign up for Fitbit Premium, which is their new service that offers all kinds of things like workout videos and mindfulness sessions and, and daily reading. Um, I'm okay on this now, so I'm just gonna hit the X in the upper left corner. And now that I'm in the app, I'm gonna to come to the upper left corner and tap on the icon that has my picture in it. 
And here we'll find the Fitbit Charge 5 has been added successfully. So I'm gonna tap here. First thing I wanna show you is turning on your notifications. The notifications is basically controlling which apps are gonna allow you to send uh, notification data to your Fitbit. So we're gonna come down to the bottom here and go to notifications. Tap allow. Now for text messages, I just wanna show really quickly, if you have multiple apps on your phone and you wanna make a different app, the direct text message for uh, app for your Fitbit, you can do it in this section. Now come on down to app notifications. And here you'll see a list of all the apps I have on the phone. So you can decide what apps do I want to get a ping notification to my Fitbit on. And it might be just banking apps. It could be social media for some people. Um, it really does vary based on the person. So go through here and see what are the most important things that you want communicated to you through your Fitbit. And then you would select them here. So for example, the weather. Yes, I want the weather pushed to my Fitbit every morning. So that's an easy one. But go through your list and see what other apps you would like to be linked with your Fitbit so you can see the data that's coming through as a notification. Okay, so now that we've um, selected our apps, the next thing you want to do is set up your quick replies. Now, quick replies are right here, and you can decide what apps you want to have your quick replies for. You're just going to hit messages because that's the one you'll use the most. And basically, you can have it pre selected. If someone sends you a text message, you can one, read it from your Fitbit, and you can respond, but you can only respond with a pre recorded response. So, for example, you might want to come here for what up or what's up and say, I can't make it. Whatever it is, I can't make it. And now this is going to show up as a response when someone. Um, sends you a text, this is one of the answers you can select as a reply. So right now you have yes, no, sounds good, can't talk now, will later, or I can't make it. You can also control the emojis that you have access to as well. So because the screen is smaller, you're limited in how much you can text, but if you work these two options right, you can still have a decent conversation uh, with your Fitbit. Okay, next. We're going to jump out of this section and we're going to go over how to change your clock face. You're going to go to the gallery at the top. And in here you'll see all of the options that are available to you for the Fitbit charge. So right now this is the current watch face that's on the watch. I'm going to tap discover more. And now I have a whole list of other really cool options. I like this one. So I'm going to select that one. Hit install, and just after a few minutes, you'll see it show up on my Fitbit as the main clock face, and at that point, um, you'll be good. And that's the process to change the clock face. You just simply go in, find a new one, tap it, and it'll take a few seconds to sync, but when it's done, you'll have your new clock face on there. So that's cool. Now, I'm going to hit the back button. Looks like the update was complete. And now we can see our new clock face is on there. It looks really nice. And that's it. Our Fitbit is officially paired. We've gone over how to navigate your Fitbit. We've gone over how to change the clock face, how to turn your notifications so you can get messages from your apps. So we've gone over all the main important nuggets. Um, and I do want to just add just a few more important things for you guys to know about. One of them being this dock is a great choice um, for you to download or excuse me, a great uh, accessory to go with your Fitbit. Uh, the Charge 5, it'll just link right up to it and allow you to charge that easy. I keep this on my nightstand and charge every couple of days. So this is a great accessory to go with your Fitbit to just make it easier to charge. I don't love the charger that comes in the box, so this is just a much cleaner look uh, device that can sit right on the nightstand. Now the other accessory that I really would recommend 
is this UV cleaner. This is something I've started to use as of late to clean my Fitbit because when you wear it for days at a time, dirt can build up quickly on the back and it can give you a rash. So with this, every few days I'll take my Fitbit and I'll just put it in, close it up, and there's just a button on the side here that I tap and it takes about three minutes for it to basically sterilize the Fitbit using a UV light and it's it basically cleans, ster cleans it and sterilizes it so that you can continue to use it. Now I still use um, a baby wipe to wipe it down, but I also like the UV cleaner because it can sometimes clean it or, or sanitize it in a way that I can't. So I will have links below in the description of where you guys can purchase those. It's definitely a great add-on to get with your Fitbit. Uh, hope you guys found this helpful. Do me a favor, leave me a comment down below and let me know what section of the video was the most helpful. Um, I love making these videos and just kind of educating the world on how to use the Fitbit. I've been using Fitbits for years and so I figured because I use them, it would be really easy to make videos just kind of explain the basics of the setup to the basic things you would use it for. So. Anyway, hope you guys found this helpful. Hit that like button if it was helpful. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Take care and as always, have a good one.